like a mouse does my mind hide under a blanket of voices and voices that swim over me like meaty, rosy bodies bobbing in the sunny seas on their holidays in Spain. The wave engulfs me with the voices, wraps its tail around my throat to my neck as I gasp for air under the barrage of voices. I am dormant, a dormouse, a doormat. Must I lie here under the choppy waters of social scenes like a doormat, waiting for the next person and the next person to scuff their genuine leather on my blushing, pretty, silent face? A doormat that says welcome. Welcome to my abode, my home, my body. Welcome to the safety of my domestic torture while they perch on their expensive vulture fortress. Velvet, I think. Still a doormat, my mouth is kept quiet. Silent, quiet, dormant. Insult me with my silence. My dormouse brain skulks in the shadows of those loud, loud, loud voices talking and cooing louder and louder louder again our voices will grow and bulge big enough to surf the wave of sin the dormouse is dead deadly doormat definitely not dormant chick bird babe am i crowded into this tiny cage we are bred to deformity big lips small waist excessively large breasts and tiny feet. Pour some sugar on me, sugar tits. My lifespan will be radical, for them, radically short. Caged and tamed, domestic rage. Silence in movement, tranquil and withering. He said the cream of the great utopia dream, and the gleam in the depths of your banker's spleen. I could crawl into the dodgy depths of spleens and bladders and snakes and ladders. They'll spit me out like a sour taste, a sour patch kid raised on the wrong patch of grass and manure. Maybe the wrong manure from the cow, the cow next door. She ripped the doormat from her dormouse house and now the bankers call her a cow. She's the cream and I its fertile dream, but to gleam a dream wouldn't be so futile. Bankers dance in the gardens, botanists fuss in the fuse box. Let them suckle on the teat of the banal beefcake body. Sugar the teat, draw them in, the metal bars won't fill a thing. The sorrow is sinful and noticeable, yet we don't notice. The sinful sorrow is carved into every face and every flesh we eat. It's a sinful cycle. We suck the supple sorrow, consume, digest, till it reunites with the mud and feeds the sorrowful sows ready for sinful harvest. Sugar tits. Beefcake. Entangled empathy. Medicines are plugged into our face holes. Antibiscotti, baby controlly. Eggs lost, eggs consumed. Make up your mind, though I don't think we do. We sensually swerve through streaks of meat. Pussies in pigtails, or pigs with pussies? Oink oink, wink wink, beefcake, sugar tits. We bloom and bloom, only for a while, not forever. Only useful for a while, not forever. That's what they tell me, yeah, to bloom and bloom for as long as possible because once that's no longer possible, well, to be anything other than, to be anything other than a blooming, bloody blooming, unbloody beauty, then that's not right. Cut you down at the stem, stab the heart of the brain within. To be anything other than the red rose on your lapel, on your arm, your wrist, twist the wrist and wring its neck, she's no longer blooming. Despite knowing, despite acknowledging the many beauties within my body, my brain, my mind, beautiful blossom that will blossom forever. Still those voices tell me otherwise, to rely on those voices complimenting your skirts and shirts is something I reject yet, can't disconnect. 
a velvet skin, so velvet petals, velvet cheeks, and a velvet vortex. They only care about my velvet vortex. Little do they know I have a bloody vortex, thoughts, feelings, brimming, bubbling, and brimming under the surface. When the prime is lost, blossom falls, they'll wring our necks, eat our flesh, and throw away the pretty heads.